Um, so we're going to revisit the inner ear structure in order to understand how balance works. Um, there are a few different parts of the inner ear that we need to understand in order to understand balance. Um, we're going to use the words in bal balance and equilibrium uh, interchangeably. We're going to pretend that they mean the same thing. Um, and so as we talked about equilibrium earlier in the semester, it means keeping something at a steady state. And so the balance or equilibrium system is what allows you to know that you're upright um, or upside down or tilting in space. Um, so one of the most important parts of this system is these semicircular ducts. And so there are three of them. And so one goes this way, one goes this way, and one goes this way. Um, and fluid runs through them and it moves depending upon the placement of the head. And so this works a little bit like if you've ever used um, a level in order to see if a painting um, was even all the way across um, or a piece of artwork. Um, you have like the bubble in the middle and um, liquid on either side. And so if the bubble is directly in the middle of the level, um, then something is level. And if it is off to the side, um, then it you can tell that the thing that you're measuring is not level. Um, and so each of the canals detect a different kind of movement. Um, one of them detects up and down this one. Um, so you can imagine is if your head is moving up and down, like if you were nodding, um, then a fluid be moving up and down through this membrane. Um, we also have um, tilting, which is this one, because you can see this is um, kind of tilted and side to side movement, this lateral one. Um, and so you also have the utricle and saccule. Um, you don't need to know the difference between them, um, but they contain hair cells that can tell how fast the fluid is moving. And so the hair cells that work in the vestibular system work similarly to the hair cells that work in the audio system, the hair cells that are located in the organ of corti, right here in your cochlea. Um, and so they tell how fast the fluid is moving and from here um, tell which of the directions, so up and down, side to side, or tilting that the head is moving. Um, and the more quickly your head moves, the more quickly action potentials fire. So the same way, the more quickly um, the, that um, action potentials fire in the hearing system um, is related to how loud a sound is um, the same way um, how quickly action potentials fire in the vestibular system is due to how quickly the head is moving. Um, so you can imagine that the more quickly the head is moving, more and more fluid is rushing um, and those hair cells are moving super, super quickly, creating lots of action potentials. Um, motion sickness is um, a thing that a lot of people experience from time to time. Um, and it happens um, because of this vestibular system. Um, and so imagine that you are in this situation, like this person who seems to be feeling very ill on the boat. Um, and so the reason that this person would get motion sickness is because um, the boat is moving up and down, right? And so your vestibular system 
can tell that you're moving up and down. Um, and so fluid in your inner ear is moving up and down. But your eyes look out and it seems like you're level. And so you have two conflicting senses. You have two conflicting systems and they end up um, with you feeling really ill. So not to end on a low note that we're feeling really ill, um, but to review today, we talked about the nature of sound, um, what happens in your ear to, to make you understand sound, um, and then also how your ears are able to help you um, stay upright and maintain balance.